Okay. I'll say you too high. I'll say you too high on that first love. So my tenor came in on it. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to be back. Uh, I, you know, I, I thought, uh, I just thought about it this morning. Paul and I have got to set a record. We've been here three weeks in straight. We're a member. I'm really glad. We're going to be down next week, though. <laughs> But uh, welcome, uh, welcome to uh, New Horizons again. Another wonderful, remarkable Sunday. Uh, it's always good to be in the house, Lord. Right? A few announcements. Uh, next Sunday, August 6th, uh, the blood drive here at 8.30 to 12.30. Also, educator prayer partners, for edu you pray for educators. Uh, sign up for that. It's Sunday, August 6th and August 13th at all campuses. Uh, you can you can receive a prayer for it, or you can pray for someone else. But for more information, just call the church office. And then one other now, Joy Club monthly luncheon is August 10th. That's Thursday, August 10th, a week from Thursday. The speaker will be Jimmy Doral. Got that right? The founder of Mission Waco, and uh, his his talk is going to be from the mountain to the valley. The cost is seven dollars per person. RSVP by. Uh, Monday, August 7th, and call Janet at the church or reserve on Janet at firstwaco.com. Okay, prayer notes are for Carrie Jones. Carrie Jones, we all know the cook, Carrie. We love her. She, she like John told me, she, she's behind the scenes. She never gets appreciated. I, I just, she's, such, she's got such a godly Christian heart that I just know she'll be floating for, for weeks when she gets the prayer notes. So this class is so good about shining her life. And what a, what better way can we shine a light than somebody that shines their light? Correct? So, and that's it. Uh, birthdays. Do we have any birthdays? It's not up here. No, no anniversaries. No visitors that I see. So we're gonna go right to we're gonna go right to prayers and praises. Oops, we do. Today I've seen it at the class. Um, we typically sponsor two children with Haiti school sponsorship and it's about that time of year again it's 338 for a year per child and that provides them with everything that they need for a successful school year and I just need to know if the class would like to do that again we have a motion we have a exact amount but it should be around thirteen hundred. What does this cost? What, how much does it cost to sponsor somebody? Three hundred and thirty-eight dollars a year. That deal. Yes. 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 So everybody, ever all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Aye. 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 Okay. I'll get that taken care of. Thank you, class. Thank you. First time I don't ask for doubts out of the room. Uh, prayer concerns, real quick. Or prayer concerns, you have to be quick. Prayer concerns. Patricia Adams, who comes in our class every Sunday almost with her little girl with the pretty shoes. Oh, yeah. She came in today almost in tears and asked if we would pray for her grandchildren. Um, she has a little girl and a little boy. His name is Sir William, and her little girl's is Jory. Anyway, she didn't go into detail, but I know that she's the grandmother, and um, She's fearful for the safety of the grandkids because they're not with her right now. So she, she needs desperately to find a lawyer, um, probably a pro bono lawyer, and she just really asks that we pray for those children while they're away from her. Well, mine's a praise and a prayer request. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, prayers for me, and I got a good report, and then for my sister. She's had um, a pretty challenging week, and she's uh, wearing a monitor. Uh, they still haven't discovered what is causing her problems. So if y'all will keep her in your prayers, Ginger Green. She wanted me to thank y'all for the prayers already, but I'm asking if we can continue to pray for her. 
And I'd like the class to continue to pray for Renee. Um, her sister, Sue Gleason, is a good friend of mine, and she goes tomorrow for her PET scan, and um, it's probably going to be a very difficult time. So I, I, I'm sorry, Mary, I was writing. She has cancer, I mean, uh, Renee. Renee. Mm -hmm. That's your sister? That's your no, sister? No, a good friend of mine, little sister. Okay. And she's 50, but <coughs> little sister. But anyway, just continue to pray for her. She, um, She's not getting the good news she had hoped to get. So. Um, I won't be here next Sunday, but my brother who lives somewhere between Tennessee and Virginia is coming for a week to stay with me and Johnny. And he's atheist and I've asked for prayer for him before his name is Duke. And I would just ask that he would come to know the Lord as a Savior. Uh, Kendall is home today. She has low blood pressure and it's been up and down. And Tuesday she has a CT scan. Please remember her in your prayers. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's let's go to the Lord. <coughs> Heavenly Father, it's Sunday again, and we're gathered here this morning to praise your name and give you glory. Glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died so we sinners can live life eternal. Thank you, God, for that gift. Thank you, Jesus, for that great sacrifice. And to receive this gift, all we need to do is accept your love. Have faith, trust, and obey your word. Lord, it's so simple to say, but at times it's so difficult to follow. But with your grace, we are forgiven, if only we believe in you. In John 11:40. Jesus asked this question. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? <clears throat> Lord, you give us free will. And as Christians, Lord, it's hard for us to understand how some use free will not to follow you or to believe in your word. Lord, we ask you to be with those non-believers who have not accepted your love and grace. We pray for them this morning. We pray that they not only find your love, forgiveness, and grace, but they will seek you with fervor and zest so others will see your light shining in them and want to seek you as well. Lord, this morning, <coughs> Lord, this morning, we pray, we pray for uh, the lady's grandchildren and uh, for their safety. We pray that she can find a lawyer so she can, she can have custody of these beautiful children. Lord, that's so tragic. It's hard for some of us to understand. But to live, live in that fear, it would, it would just have to be terrifying. So Lord, we just ask you to give her peace and comfort and let your grace intervene in this situation. Sharon's sister, Ginger, needing results or diagnosis. Lord, we just pray that that's forthcoming Lord, we pray for Renee. Uh, she's battling cancer. Lord, we just ask that she gets she gets answers as well, and that there are good results. That they treat that they find a treatment for her, Lord. For Trisha's brother, Duke, Lord, we just pray that he would come to know you, love you, serve you, as his sister does, Lord. We just uh, it's, uh, it's so hard when people in your family, you know, you hurt for them. Uh, they just need you, Lord, they need you. So be with Tricia, but especially be with her brother, David. And Lord, we, we lift up Kendall this morning for low blood pressure. We pray that the CT scan uh, gives, uh, renders good <coughs> results. And God, we thank you all for all the praises and glory and glories in our life. Lord, you're so, you're so wonderful. 
Uh, God, we're so blessed, very blessed, that we have the title as Christian. May we always strive to do our best so others will know we are followers of the Father Almighty. We pray that we do, that all we do and all we say glorify you, Lord. Matthew 5, 16, we hear these words. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Lord, be with those who are not with us this morning. Let them know that they are loved and they're missed. And Lord, if they're traveling, we, we pray for safety. Now, Lord, be with our class leader, John, as we learn more about you and your love for us. We pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I want to thank everybody for my prayer notes last week. God bless me with a wonderful week. Thanks all of you for those. I appreciate it. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Changed a couple of words here, but so I could use this in Sunday school. <laughs> this is called golfing with dentures. <laughs> a couple of old guys were golfing when one mentioned that he was going to Dr. Steinberg for a new set of dentures the next morning. His elderly buddy remarked that he too had gone to the very same dentist two years ago. Is that so? asked the first old guy. Well, he, did he do a good job? And the second oldest replied, he said, well, I was on the, the golf course yesterday when a guy in the next fairway hooked a shot. And the ball must have been going at least 100 miles an hour when it slammed into my testicles. The first old guy was confused and said, well, what the heck does that have to do with dentures? He said it was the first time in two years my teeth didn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a true story. Okay, now, Sharon Hobart sent this to me November 10th, 2010. And I can, I could read this now because I, I don't follow professional sports anymore. Um, this is all about the Dallas Cowboys. 2010, they were, I think, the real Cowboys. Texas State Police are cracking down on speeders heading into Dallas. For the first offense, they give you two Dallas Cowboy tickets. If you get stopped a second time, they make you use them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call 47 millionaires around a TV? watching the Super Bowl, the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. What are the Dallas Cowboys and Billy Graham have in common? They both can make 70,000 people stand up and yell, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a Dallas Cowboy with a Super Bowl ring? Old. <laughs> How many Dallas Cowboys did it take to win the Super Bowl? And no one remembers. <laughs> and last but not least, what do the Cowboys and possums have in common? Both play dead at home and get killed on the road. <laughs> All right, since we're two minutes ahead. Just, hey, Johnny. Yes. I forgot to say, the no. Met, the, no, that's all right. The Matthews brought the donuts this morning. I just realized that. I'm so sorry, but I didn't acknowledge it. So thank you. <laughs> well, could have left it out. The worst thing about bringing their own donuts is you eat one on the way, and you eat one to make sure it's okay, and you eat another one. <laughs> okay, this is about jokes you can tell in some of these. A little girl dressed in her Sunday best was running as fast as she could, trying not to be late for Bible class. 
as she ran, she prayed, Dear Lord, please don't let me be late. Dear Lord, please don't let me be late. And while she was running and praying, she tripped on a curb and fell, getting her clothes dirty and tearing her dress. She got up, brushed herself off, and started running again. And as she ran once again, she began to pray, Dear Lord, please don't let me be late, but please don't shove me either. Oh, no. <laughs> <coughs> Three boys in the schoolyard bragging about their fathers. The first boy says, My dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper and he calls it a poem, and they give him $50. The second boy says, Well, that's nothing. My dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. He calls it a song, and they give him a hundred dollars. Third little boy says, I got you both of My dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. He calls it a sermon. It takes eight people to collect all the money. <laughs> <laughs> An elderly woman died last month. Having never been married, she requested no male pallbearers. In her handwritten instructions for her memorial service, she wrote, they wouldn't take me out while I was alive and I don't want them taking me out when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a true story. A police recruit was asked during the exam, what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother? And he replied, call for backup. <laughs> Two boys are walking home from Sunday school after hearing a strong preaching on the devil. One said to the other, What do you think about all this Satan stuff? The other boy replied, Well, you know how Santa Claus turned out as probably your dad. <laughs> okay. Kind of semi related to Donnie's prayer. Every week he stays up there. Probably will always here. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I love. We could talk a couple hours just about what that means. Uh, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path, and leave a trail. Related. Okay. Okay, we thought it was hot last week. We thought it was hot the week before. This week, the forecast, and I went to three of them this morning, up to 107, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and maybe Friday, 106, 105 tomorrow. All of them are at least 105. So if you thought last week was hot. Book of James, this is the last chapter of the we're going to talk about um, the book. And I want to start with the question. And some of these questions are a little tough, so just bear with me. Think of time when you preserved, persevered, I'm sorry, in spite of <laughs> difficult circumstances. That's from last week. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Okay, think of a time when God answered a specific prayer. Okay, so we all can relate to this. A specific prayer for you. How did that answered prayer change your faith in prayer? A specific prayer, it was answered, and did, did you have any different reflection or think differently about certain prayers? Or, give me an example or two. Come on. We've all been there. Yes, ma'am. Hang on one second. Well, I had one, you know, I hate to say a small prayer because no prayer is small, but I'm a very nervous flyer on an airplane, and we travel a lot. 
And if it gets bumpy, I, Gary's probably got scars on his arm from me grabbing him. But I have started praying that God would just calm my soul and that he would protect the flock too, but that he would calm my soul and remind me that he is always there. And about the last four flights that we've had, I've had no anxiety, even when it gets rough. And that is nothing but his faithfulness. That it, It's just, like I said, it, it seems kind of small, but for me, it's, it's a big one. And um, it, it's just amazing. It's good, good, great story. Donnie? Years ago, uh, Paula had a growth. Uh, uh, we didn't know what it was and went over it and we prayed and, and it was benign. And I mean, it, prayer does work because we were scared to death. She had ovarian cancer. And uh, it, it just came out so wonderful. Surgery went well. But it's just, we just know how uh, wonderful prayer is. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm coming. I'd run, but I can't. <laughs> Might play golf Friday and Saturday, so that's why I can't run anymore. When I was a little girl, I was probably 10 or 11. And I found out my mother had cancer. And so I believed in prayer. And I mean, from the time I was raised, I, I don't even remember going to church. I mean, I always was in church. And so I got down on my knees and started praying that evening. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. And all of a sudden, God dropped a peace down in my heart. And I was like 10 or 11, maybe 12 when that happened. It was pretty late in the night. So I went and woke my mother up and told her, I said, Mom, everything's going to be okay. Well, come to find out. And this is awful to find out, but they had mixed her x-rays up with oh, someone else. And so my mother did not have cancer. I don't care how, what happened, God just told me and brought a real peace to my heart. And that spoke to me as a child more than, and I've kept that, you know, that strong, well, not always, but most of the time I could always go back and remember what God did for me as a child and that peace he dropped in my heart. Great story. Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, I need someone to read uh, James, what did I say? Fifth chapter, 12 through 20. Who will read that for me? For us. Yeah. He said, now? This very second. <laughs> <laughs> Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. <laughs> and it did not rain on the land, on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Thank you. So are we maybe to blame Elijah for this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. 
Very good. Okay. Uh, what advice did James give to the troubled, the cheerful, and the sick? Kind of covers the whole spectrum here. Right. 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 All right. Pray. Right. Yes. Bottom line, pray. Okay. Pretty simple. so simple it's kind of hard to swallow. I mean, you think we we'll, we'll want some big answer, okay? Uh, how does prayer make a difference in our lives, in the lives of believers? How does that make, what, what, how does it make a difference in our lives? Does it make us happy? Does it give us comfort? It's, um, You know, I like to think of it as something to lean against, like a friend, like a spouse, like, you know, someone you can trust that uh, is always there, always there. Um, come on. Yes, ma'am. Hang on. Hang on. Mike's in the kitchen doing something. There's something going on. I think it helps us use the scripture's promises to have trust in God. It makes our lives so much more peaceful when we don't think everything's up to us, that God is uh, leading us, that he's directing our lives. Yes, very good. Others? Okay, hang on one second, Donnie. We're giving Mike a little extra exercise today. And Paul said, pray without ceasing. Yes, yeah, so let me <coughs> Prayer without all ceasing. All the time. Or just, well, how, how did he mean that? Yep, that's good, Bill. Yes, sir, Donnie. I think it allows us to talk to God. You know, when we pray, we're talking to God. And, uh, you know, we read his word, he's talking to us. But when we pray, we're talking to him. So we need them both so to have a conversation. Yeah, you know, we talked about this over and over over the years it's, you know where do you pray how do you pray I mean you, there's no perfect place you don't have to sit down and, you know in front of the cross on your knees I pray a lot driving and then when someone cuts in front of me I have to stop them <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then, then, I turn, then I turn into myself and I go back to my prayer and say forgive me <laughs> that person should have a driver's license. <laughs> oh, she's going to tell him. What's up? Oh, <laughs> Bill had a good question, Johnny. He was wondering how you really ever pray without ceasing. Oh, okay. I didn't know his question. How do you pray without ceasing? Uh, good question. They want to answer it? Maybe it's more of a lifestyle type thing. You just always live where you're praying at things, about things. Yes, sir. Others oh, one. Okay, hang on one second. Well, I think the prayer without ceasing thing means that you don't always have to get down on your knees and say a formal kind of prayer. I think your prayers can be just little quick sentences yep. and. Sometimes you can just say, God bless so-and-so, yeah. and not in an ugly way, but in a nice way, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. But, you know, they can be short, simple things. They don't have to be real formal prayers. Right. You know, and I think we've all found this to be true, but we're talking to a friend or maybe a someone we just met, or, you know, it doesn't make any difference, and, and they've got a, a a situation that's a nice way to put it they got a problem in their life and you end the conversation and you walk off and you end it by saying I'm going to pray for you and sometimes it really catches them kind of like hmm. uh, and then you got to follow through uh, you got to follow through with what you told that person but uh I've had a couple people say, hey, time out, turn around. Well, 
would you really take the time to pray for me? Yes. You don't even know me. Well, <coughs> uh, they'll make a difference. Pe people like to hear that, and that's, to me, that's kind of part of our job. That's kind of part of our responsibility. To be who we are, followers, believers, uh, uh, in in that duty, if you will, in that uh, we have responsibilities, and that's one of them. Just to pray for others. Maybe pray for others we'll never meet, we'll never see. Um, that's powerful. Hang on a minute, Trisha. This class, as you well know, we've said it over and over again. We've been called by outsiders, prayer warriors. And I've had numerous people say, I know I'm not a member of your class, but when you ask your class to pray for it, and for this reason, because I said, well, sure. And they've, they've heard the reputation that we, we like to pray for others. Patricia? Um. Friday, our Bible study group went to Stillwell Nursing Home, which we've been doing a couple of more times this summer and had a worship service. But afterwards, we got a lunch and we were praying before we ate. And I noticed that the lady who served us stayed in the room and seemed to be praying with us. And so we invited her to come to our Bible study group and she was so excited. She said, I work on Sundays, so I never get to go to church. There's no longer a Saturday night service anyplace. So she's planning to come and join our group. And I thought, wow, that was fun. Yes. God just sometimes works when you have no idea. That's right. Yeah, you just never know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, great story. Oh. <laughs> What'd you say, Mary Lou? There's bubbles. There's bubbles. Oh, yes. 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 There's bubbles. There's bubbles. There's in there a song? Maybe, maybe, maybe you need to pray about it. <laughs> so it's not your eyes, everybody. There really are bubbles. How are you That's a song. They're really little. You and your twenty-two. Yeah. I thought it was mine. I thought it was my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're coming out of here. Okay, hang on. <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> Another question. <laughs> what kind of prayer makes things happen? That's pretty simple, isn't it, Diane? Mike? Mike is fascinated. I was infatuated with bubbles. <laughs> I think the kind of prayer that really brings you into the presence of the Lord is one that's bathed in humility. And we talked about humility several weeks ago. And then on Facebook this week, a good friend of mine sent me uh, Mother Teresa's 15 tenets of humility. And they're, they're right on spot. So if, if you're looking on the internet, just just good, just put in the search, Sister Teresa's tenets of humility, and you'll see them. And boy, Johnny, it's a it's a lesson. Yeah, but right. I mean, if your prayer is truly baked in humility yeah. and not self-centered requests, then it's more effective. Right. Very well stated. Thank you, Diane. What does Elijah's experience teach believers about prayer? His experience. What do you, what do, you do? Was he a meteorologist on the side or what? Yeah. <laughs> it kind of went a little too far there. there. <laughs> it worked. Went a little too far. Hmm. Anybody? Chris is going to get in the car. She said, I'm sorry I talked so much. <laughs> God made me do it. Um, 
Jesus says in the Bible that our, our prayers of faith are what make things happen. And um, Elijah evidently believed that he could trust God to be faithful to answer his prayers. And he had the power, God had the power, has the power to answer our prayers. Yep, that's good. Read something here that Billy Graham wrote. And it's out of a book of his called Hope for the Troubled Heart. I don't know when it was written. No matter where we are, God is as close as a prayer. He is our support and strength. He will help us make, make our way up again from whatever depths we have fallen. We don't often consider that sometimes Jesus is our strength simply to sit still. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. Our natural tendency when we have a painful happening in our lives is to go into action. Do something. Something, it is wise, sometimes it is wiser to wait and just be still. The answers will come. We may be sure that God is true to his word and answers all sincere prayers often in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. His answer may be yes, or it may be no, or it may be wait. If it is no or wait, we cannot say that God has not answered our prayer. It simply means that the answer is different than what we expected. When we pray to help, or we pray for help in trouble, or for being healing in sickness, or for deliverance in persecution, God may not give us what we ask for because that not that may not be his wise and loving will for us. He will answer our prayer in his own way, and he will not let us down in our hour of need. Okay, what keeps people from turning to God? What what? My. What what gets in our way? Okay. I think it's man's natural tendency to try to fix things their way, and they only turn to God when their way doesn't work. Yeah. I, I, what about women? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's several things. I think um, thinking it's too minor that you know God doesn't want to hear a little prayer, or also um, just like a faith that something will happen. There's a song right now. If any of y'all have heard it, it's called "I Only." It says, "I only talk to God when I need a favor." Uh, it's it's a country. Jelly Roll sings it. If you know Jelly Roll. Anyway, it's a really neat, you know, and who am I to think that I deserve a savior? But it talks about that, you know, I mean, how many people do only talk to God when they need something? They forget to praise him. They forget to thank him. And um, if, if you haven't heard the song, you might want to Google it. It's I Only Talk to God When I Need a Favor by Jelly Roll. And it, it is a very powerful song about if I only talk to him then, why should I think I deserve a savior? Yeah. Very good, thank you. Donnie? I think sometimes it's other people. Uh, it could be me keeping somebody from praying. I might have said something wrong or did something that I should, you know, been a bad example in, in a certain thing. And, they said, well, he's a Christian. I don't want to be like him. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm serious. I, I, yeah. I'll never forget one time I was in the store and I had this Christian slogan on my shirt and I was in a bad mood and I was not very friendly to the checker. She read my shirt and she, she read it back to me. And I went, oh, and it changed my attitude. <laughs> one evening real quick. And I thought, oh my goodness, what, what a failure I am. Yeah. But other people, Thank you. Hmm. You ought to wear that shirt for what? 
<laughs> yeah, where about his watch one side or something? <laughs> Not to church. I think we got one more question. <clears throat> Let's just go to the top question. How can you develop more discipline and patience in your prayer life? Develop more discipline in our prayer life. Tough question. Hard. How can we develop that? How can we work on it? Working on something, we practice it. Many of you have ever said, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry, I've been too busy. I've left you out. Forgive me. End of prayer. Just be honest. I, I love it because I like to try to solve things myself. Your list is long and it's serious. Let me just take care of the little stuff. And sometimes little stuff becomes big stuff. Uh, you don't like that. He, he wants it all. And, uh, anyway. Okay. Might be one more question. How, how, how can or does keep you okay? Who, who, who can? Who can? That's from last week, too. Okay. <laughs> Hey, it's morning in the morning when I do this, okay? You know? I don't have one cup of coffee, all right? Okay. Oh, I like that one. Hey. <laughs> More passion in his own prayer. Uh, let me say it one more time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, the time uh, that uh, you set aside for us to study you, not necessarily worship you, but to study your word, discuss your word, share it with others. Uh, uh, Father, we just we thank you for that freedom that we take for granted. There's millions of people in this world, we know this, that have to do what we do, um, hiding, uh, literally. They cannot do it openly in public, or else they'd be persecuted. Oh, they were so lucky. So, so lucky. Uh, let me just close with something very simple that I say over and over for many years. Um, we have been and we will be the only Bible that some people will ever read. That's scary, scary stuff. It's how we carry ourselves, it's what we say, it's how we conduct our lives. Someone's watching, someone's always watching. Um, just continue to kind of give us a nice little spiritual elbow uh, reminding of that, us of that very fact. Uh, Father, we thank you. Everything you give us, but most of all, top of the list, we thank you for your son, Jesus. And it's in his special, beautiful name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.